and welcome to the special debate that we are hosting at the National Offices uh, today. My name is Stephen Payton and joining me from the National is uh, Shona Payton, one of our columnists and uh, general folk kicking around. Um, recently, a new pro-union uh, organisation was founded called UK Unity who issued something of a challenge uh, <laughs> at their launch, saying uh, rather than just sitting behind your keyboards, why don't you come out and actually have a discussion yeah. with us? So uh, joining us today is David uh, from UK Unity Great. to do exactly that. Great, thanks very much Stephen, really appreciate you. Um, hosting tonight and look forward to talking with you. Great. So uh, UK Unity uh, came from Scotland and Union, another organisation that's mm, been no, no, very no. Well, that's definitely the way it's kind of been spun anyway. Okay. Yeah, it seems like it's okay. been a bit of a split. I mean, what happened? Um, I, I can't go overly into the, the specifics of it, but um, I, I was increasingly concerned from a pro-UK perspective that if, if we're not seen to be discussing what I see as the elephant in the room of Brexit, then the, the pro UK side will be will be less will be worse off for it. Um, you know, for, for a while I've been suggesting that the 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 pro UK movement should should not even come out and support it, but just provide a focus for discussing it. But um, you know, there wasn't maybe that appetite for change. You know, I think in Scotland and Union there's some some really great people who work for it. There's some really great volunteers and activists that have done a fantastic job and um, I believe helped stop a second referendum. Um, but um, you know, like any organisation, there's 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 you can't agree with everyone. So um, myself as the, the primary driver and 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 an ex um, employee of the organisation and some others decided to do something a wee bit different and I'm sure as you can tell, it is a wee bit different. It is a wee bit different, to the point where some people have asked, is it, is it a parody? Are you for real? Well, um, I was saying to Stephen earlier, uh, Oscar Wilde said there's only one thing worse than being talked about, and that's not being talked but about. is that really true in the context of a serious political campaign? It, um, it depends on how seriously you take yourself. Right. Um, I, I think I have a serious message, but I'm actually quite a light-hearted person sometimes so the, the campaign kind of reflects my personality and it is it is a wee bit quirky and it is a wee bit different but at the heart of it if it is a serious message then I can be serious if and when required but I think we what I class ourselves as an aggressive startup. Um, you know, and, and when you're in that stage you, you have to be different. Okay. So let's actually talk about the message a little bit then obviously you have a different message from Scotland yeah. Union before it's established. I mean, yeah. um, and as you kept saying, it seems like the split has at least come because you have a different idea of what the message for a United Kingdom should be like. I mean, what is it that defines UK Unity as separate from what the message of Scotland Union is putting well, forward? We, we fully support and agree with the decision to leave the European Union. Uh, Scotland Union position is to respect the UK wide vote. Um, we feel there is huge benefits to be had by leaving the European Union. And we have to be highlighting those, and um, we take a far stronger line on on what we perceive as to be the weakening of the United Kingdom, and um, through further devolution, that all the main pro UK parties up here and campaigns don't, but they, they kind of shy away from, in our opinion. So you you're in favour of no further devolution. We, with the powers coming back from Brussels. There has to be a proper business case made that if those powers went to the Holyrood Parliament, they would benefit the entire United Kingdom. That's our position on that. If that can be proven, then then fine. I mean, we're not. We we realise that as a Scottish Parliament, I'm not standing outside demanding it shut tomorrow. But because who am I to do that? We we don't think devolution has helped the United Kingdom. We think devolution has weakened the United Kingdom, um, and we would like to see devolution working to strengthen the United Kingdom. Okay, but that seems like to me a, an odd place to put your priorities. Mm -hmm. I don't think devolution should be working to strengthen the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. Surely it should be working to strengthen the rights that people have or the access to facilities that people have. But through devolution in Scotland, we have taken a different path. <coughs> we've got free prescriptions, we've got um, different types of healthcare, yeah. we have access to all these other areas. In that sense, devolution has been a real boon to the people in Scotland. I mean, I don't see how you could argue that that should almost be not a thing because it is potentially weakening the ties of the United Kingdom. That's your opinion. There are others that would, would disagree with that. At the recent Scottish Social Attitudes survey, 20% of people 
said they would like to see the Scottish Parliament closed. Now, that's a pretty whopping percentage of people. Likewise, the overall consensus was, I think, more of a meh towards the Scottish Parliament. I mean, I was talking with Shona earlier about the, the radical budget. I, I mean, I didn't really see anything overly radical about, about that budget. You know, a penny here, a penny there. It's, it's kind of tinkering around the problems. And um, I think people, when push comes to shove, feel that real change can happen at a UK level and not just at a Scottish level. And I think at the last general election, that was really, really shown up, where people in Coat Bridge voted in the same swings as people in Canterbury. You know, and I, I for the first time in a long time, saw a realignment with Scottish politics, with UK politics. Um, I mean, there's no, there, there, we cannot deny there has been a divergence in, in political patterns across the UK. I'm, 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 not, I'm not daft, but I think perhaps there is a move to, towards strengthening the political institutions of the UK. When you say strengthening the political unions, do you mean more like people in other parts of, for example, Scotland began to vote more like what we're seeing overwhelmingly in England, for example, becoming more conservative? You, you can't deny the election result where up in the northeast of Scotland the, the Conservatives utterly romped it. And these are naturally conservative areas that for many years voted SNP. You know, the SNP were traditionally a, what I would call a small C Conservative party. And the SNP have this very, very difficult balance of retaining a radical tendency that they've taken on board, but that traditional Scottish conservatism, and that's brewing under the surface. Mm -hmm. But others would definitely argue for sure that that vote moving back towards conservative has actually been more influenced by the constitutional debate going on, the people who are more concerned with the union than necessarily the politics of that party itself. And potentially, yes. If you're looking at recent yeah. polling as well, actually what you're seeing is the conservative vote collapsing again. Well, I, 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 I was of the opinion that a lot of people let the conservatives their vote in the, the the UK election in 2017. I don't think they necessarily did it overly gladly, but you, you cannot deny there was a huge a huge shift there <clears throat> and, and towards that. But I, I the, when we give further powers to the Scottish Parliament, in my opinion, it, it helps the Scottish Parliament and those involved in the Scottish Parliament and those who benefit from having a Scottish Parliament. Whether that can be taken, trickled down to people is, is debatable. You said in your video that you want to talk about how good Britain's going to be after yep. Brexit. How, where are you getting your insights from into how good Britain's going to be after Brexit, given that the UK government has been able to offer us almost nothing in terms of a plan or any assurances? I, th I think the reaction of the UK government so far to the negotiations has been terrible. Um, I'm not the Prime Minister, I probably won't ever be Prime Minister. Well, because, don't say that too soon. Well, <laughs> Sorry, um, I think people would have a heart attack. Um, but. I would have left the European Union immediately because people voted to leave. You could have instituted Article 50. The fact of the matter is we are a net contributor to the European Union of eight billion per year. That is eight billion a year that we will be able to make a choice of how to spend now in the United Kingdom. And that will be seen back in Scotland through the Barnet Consequential. For the first time in 30, 40 years, we'll have control of our own fishing policy, We'll have control of our own agriculture Wait, did you not policy. just say those powers should only come back to Holyrood? I said we. Oh, we as in the, the UK. The United Kingdom. So Scotland so can just make a case. Well, Scotland's for each an one. integral part of the, the United Kingdom. So should those powers come back to the Scottish Parliament? As I said, if, if, a, if a suitable business case can be made to show that that will benefit so we have Scotland to kind of the UK. beg for them. Uh, I wouldn't say beg. I think you, if you, you have to prove something. If you go to the bank and ask for a loan, do you go in and beg or do you fill out their forms and, and, and consult with them? I don't them? think I have to de you know, make a business case. Well, maybe, I, maybe it depends mm. what the loan is for. But, I mean, you've obviously got a vision of a great post-Brexit yeah. Britain. What, so have you, have you spent all that money mentally? <laughs> what, what does it look like? How is it different? What, what, what it looks to me like is... is Something is going to be totally different. I believe a government has to act in the best interests of its citizens, and primarily that means by taking industrial action that you are prevented to do as part of the EU single market. That for me is the biggest thing of all. When you look at the steel industry that collapsed down in, in uh, down south and nearly capitulated, 
and likewise with BIFAB recently. In a post-Brexit Britain, if the government wishes to, the government can come in and take direct access and help industrial strategy. It cannot do that as part of the single market. Okay, but another factor affecting that would be immigration and we'd be having the yep. right workers for the yep. right jobs. So would you agree that then countries need to have an immigration policy that suits them rather than a one-size-fits-all? I, I, countries as in, are you defining Scotland as a country in that? It was a trick question. I was trying to catch you out, David. Mm -hmm. I, I think you need an immigration policy for the entire United Kingdom that works for everybody in the UK. But the problem is that there's no such thing as a UK-wide immigration policy that works for everyone. UK immigration policies consistently fail Scotland. Actually, if you're looking at it, it doesn't take into account some of the unique issues that we have here to do with like, our ageing population, and specifically certain areas that qu require more immigration, mm -hmm. um, where we have skill shortages. If we have a UK-wide policy, um, it doesn't necessarily address that, and historically hasn't. It doesn't make sense that we should have a one-size-fits-all thing that has this massive area catchment when does into that account individual problems. When does that balkanisation of policy stop? Do you start saying you have different policies for London? Do you have different policies for the West Midlands? That's for them to decide. I mean, we're not telling any parts of England what they should do. I, I, I think that, well, I believe in one United Kingdom. That's, that's why we're called unity. That, that's just what I believe in. I believe we're a, we're, a, we're a nation of 65 million people. I don't think that's a huge country. I think it's a manageable country at that level. And I, I just don't agree with bespoke deals for different parts of the UK. But is the reason that you don't believe in them is just because the UK is a unified thing and that's it? There's no more to it than that? No, but I, I believe that if, if people sat down and worked together, we could come up with a strategy. So at a UK level, if we were hard to have immigration levels, then we, we could say to people, well, why not come to Scotland? We, we, we have skill shortages in Scotland. You know, I, I, don't, I, I don't think by having a, a policy across the UK prevents you from attracting people to different parts within the UK. But isn't that ultimately what the point of having separate policies would be? If you say you're trying to people in Scotland, it's because we have no, a separate policy. No, here. because the SNP want to create divisions within the United Kingdom. Okay. That's why they're doing this. It's, the, the SNP exists solely, and it's number one in their manifesto, to make Scotland an independent country. I don't believe that they genuinely want to do... Well, they claim they always want to do what's right for Scotland. The SNP want to do what's right for the SNP and for the independence movement. Okay, but, I mean, let's say even for a second that I, I don't, that I, was I, I, don't, I, I, I do not look at life through a na Scottish nationalist prism. So I don't think most people in Scotland do either. No. I think most people in Scotland are genuinely interested in themselves and their families and what's best for their communities. I think um, most people aren't perhaps in this bubble that, that all three of us but, are in, thinking a lot about the Constitution, but they do notice money in their pocket, they do notice yeah. the number of hours they're working or obliged mm -hmm. to work by their employer, they notice things like this. And the, the SNP government, they, they, they have a strategy, but they have to win voters. And you could you could argue that they're, they're, they're tricking people somehow into by improving their lives, but I think most people just see it as a good thing that their lives are being improved. In the recent social attitudes survey as well, 68% of people across the UK said they wanted to see a more controlled immigration policy. 64% said the same in Scotland. That, I think immigration has been a fantastic thing for the United Kingdom. I think it will continue to be after leaving the European Union. And I think we need to continue to, to attract people to the, to the country that, that, that want to work and, 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 and bring new things. But... I do not believe in, in, in a separate policies for immigration. He said that what you're saying on the one hand that immigration has been great and yeah. that we should be bringing more people in. The but fact is that this UK government isn't interested in that. Well, this UK government has been saying it's been setting um, no, almost no. almost just like no. targets out of nowhere, no. which it has been doing. And, and, and that's the issue here is that the two parliaments actually do have or seemingly a different approach to what immigration should be in these countries. And I think it's not necessarily a bad thing to address that and say, well, in that case, why don't you have your policy and why don't you have your policy? And that doesn't necessarily create division. What I'm arguing is that in Scotland, you could, you could have incentives to attract people from different, to fill different skill sectors. But is it not the case that the, the message sent by Brexit to the rest of mm -hmm. Europe, if not the world, is very much a 
closed for business, yeah. anti-foreigner, uh, anti-immigrant yeah. message. A absolute, I absolute mean, garbage. Labour's controls on immigration mugs, it's, it's just not a good look if you genuinely do you, want to attract um, immigration. You, you look, though, that it cannot be denied that amongst certain parts of, of, of maybe northern and southern England, there is a perception amongst people that live there that immigration has had a negative impact on their lives. Whether that is accurate or not is open to debate. That is the perception. I, for one, worry about the future of race relations in this country if the government doesn't take an overall look at the situation and, and tries to do what's right for everybody. And, and I also think if you are inviting people into your country, you have a duty of care to them. Do you think it's right that in a part of Glasgow people live in Dickensian squalor? So hang on, but are you suggesting that if we have too much more immigration, the, there's some kind of latent racism no, no, that's going no, to suddenly no, come to the No, what I'm saying is it's a government policy. It's a perfectly simple thing. If you've got five people going for one service today and you've got ten people going tomorrow, if the government do not spend more money on that service, there's going to be issues. But that's overlooking the fact that immigration and immigrants have actually boosted the economy. And I agree with you on that. I agree with you on that. But government spending does not keep up with that. Well, exactly. And UK and government exactly spending government. isn't interested in that. And if I, I'm not here like, to buy. I'm not. I'm not here loving the UK government. Okay. I did not vote for the UK government. I'm not here to defend. But at the same time, mean. you are still arguing. That no. those policies should be set by the UK I, government. No, I'm arguing for the UK to continue existing. But that's still set by the UK government in the end. And what I'm arguing is that by devolving that power and continuing to devolve powers, you weaken the fabric of the United Kingdom. It's not the United Kingdom's fault that we're badly run. It's not the fault of the UK that, in my opinion, for the last 30 years it has been mismanaged. That's why there's a nationalist movement in this country. It's, I mean, I, I, the, the launch event that I spoke about, I spoke about when you had British Steel, British Rail, um, British Leyland decimated under the Thatcher government. People literally thrown on the scrap heap. These were all the areas that overwhelmingly voted yes. I mean, that, that, people see a failing of the UK government, and I agree with that, they're right, but that's not a reason to break up and destroy your country. But it is a reason to take control back from an area that's failing. So you, you believe and in, you believe in taking somewhere. back control, is that what you're saying, Stephen? It's a poor choice of words for me there. But no, but at the same time, though, you have to admit, though, that if people are looking at the UK as not functioning in a way that's actually benefiting everyone, then maybe bringing power back close no, to people's hands I, I, is going to be I, an opportunity to, take, to actually fix that. And that's why a lot of people voted yes. They no, wanted to fix no, the problems I, that the UK I, I, had. I, I disagree, because I think what that, that means is good leaders. And I, I don't necessarily believe that the failure is, is a result of the institutions, it's a, it's a result of the people behind the institutions. And that, that, that is the bigger picture, not, not, not the failing of, it, it, it is not Westminster that has failed, it is the people within Westminster. But what is Westminster if not the people? I mean, you can talk about also all the institu institutionalised problems of Westminster as well, yeah. and the fact that it's the same people from the same schools all ultimately ending up in there. And I, 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 I agree, I, I agree with that. But, but how, how are you going to resolve that then? Because, how, because nothing is going to this better. Because, because nothing is permanent. Because people, I think, across the UK have had enough of the situation. And I was saying this to Shona earlier, the people that voted to leave the European Union demographically were the same people that voted to, for Scotland to be independent. But how, how long, how many years do you think Scottish people should reasonably expect to wait for this better UK government to be in place and to be start listening? Bearing in mind, as much as you're doing your best to fly mm -hmm. the Brexit flag, you're preaching to a country, a nation, not a region, mm -hmm. that voted to remain. So you are you have okay, got let, a bit let, of an let's, let's go back to the EU referendum in, in Scotland. All five political parties, leaders, said remain. Everybody in Hollywood remain. There was what well, was Tom Harris ran the Leave campaign, I think he did a, a good job and in a small campaign and it still won thirty eight percent of the vote. Over a million people voted to leave the EU with little or no campaign. What does that tell you if there had have been a proper sustained leave campaign in Scotland. 
I still think it would have been a remain vote, but I think it would have been a lot closer. And and likewise, when the push comes to shove, if it hadn't been for people in Northern Ireland and Scotland who voted to leave the European Union, the United Kingdom wouldn't be leaving the European Union. Well, yeah, I mean, we are still part of the UK. It's Scotland's still part of it, but ultimately Scotland still voted to remain, even if there was Scotland. Didn't. Agree. Scotland, Scotland can't. Scotland doesn't vote. The, the people of Scotland voted to remain in the EU, and, and I acknowledge that fact. But two years prior to that, overwhelmingly people voted to remain part of the UK. So do you think when you mentioned about all the politicians or, or the, the, the leading politicians being Remain supporters, yes. it, it almost seemed like you were suggesting that they perhaps misled you know, people who left to their own devices would have voted to leave. And when I say left to their own devices, I mean exposed to the UK uh, leave propaganda, the, the quite nasty and ugly campaigns that were being run. Perhaps then there was dare I say, a kind of civilising influence in Scotland no, to kind of no, put I, some of that can't, in perspective. Can't. So that's, do the people that's know, garbage. do you know better what the people no, really want? No, I don't know better. No, of course I don't. Do. No, of course I don't. But you're sort of suggesting that it was a bit of a... But it was a stitch up. By whom? By the establishment in Scotland. That right. overwhelmingly came out for Remain. Okay, but you're saying that as if all of the big voices out there were speaking Remainers. They were. Well, what about the Daily Mail and the other papers that were backing Brexit? You can't say that there weren't these actual huge and influential voices well, who were also there, backing there, to there, leave. There was papers, the but it, here's the interesting thing. You guys, well, take it you all voted to stay in the European Union? I did. I did. Okay. Nicola Sturgeon, you're all on the same side as David Cameron, Nick Clegg, Tony Blair, uh, Corporation-wise, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, J.P. Morgan, the CBI, the very people that the Yes campaign railed against for, for Project Fear. But does this not just show you that when people are faced with a vote, they look in Scotland, they look at the facts, they don't say, whose side am I on? They don't say, oh, am I shoulder to shoulder with David Cameron? Because that's no, a really simplistic facts, way of looking at facts, things. Facts, facts, well... I don't care about well, being on the same side as David Cameron if he's right well, about something. Well, but apparently we were to go into a recession when we left the European Union. Apparently unemployment would rocket. None of that happened. Well, well we, we haven't left. left yet. Well, we're in the process of We leaving. are in the process of leaving. The, the, and as, as, as such figures that came out today showed, um, the estimated or forecast growth for the UK has dropped way below the EU average. It's sitting down about 1.5%, which is below Greece, which everyone wants to <laughs> compare Scotland that, to. That, what, what you have uh, is that you have an establishment in, across the UK that doesn't like change. It fears any change. And, and what basically happened during the EU referendum was Project Fear Times a Thousand, which, which you guys on the, the Yes campaign railed against as well. So you was know, that I, a bad project for you, or a good, which was a which? Well, I, I never, I did not subscribe to the project for your message of, of better together. Well, I, I look at it in two ways, right? I'm not arguing that leaving the EU is not without its downsides. Okay, there's going to, change is never easy. Nobody likes change, it's always going to be hard. But I think in four to five years' time, we will begin to reap the massive rewards of it. The fact remains the UK is the sixth largest country economy in the world. It is a member of the UN Security Council, prominent member of NATO. It is a, a still a global player. Do you think that... I, I'm not sure that that message will necessarily sit all that well with people in Scotland who are not really interested in the UK strutting about being a global player, having no, nuclear I mean, weapons, I mean, pretending to still have an no, impact. I'm, I think that, I, I, I can't help but think I, that did, might did, not did be... I, did I mention nuclear weapons You, you talked about the UN Security Council, what, you talked okay, about Britain okay, okay, having what, a place no, in the what, world. And what does being a member of the UN Security Council will allow you, you to do? Will you tell me what It allows you to be a levelling influence on, on, on other countries. And we still exercise a veto in that regard. And likewise, strutting around the global um, world, yeah, we do that. We do that through DFID, Department for International Development, where the UK still contributes the, the targets for international aid. So if the UK is strutting around the world, giving international aid, and the open countries is a good thing, then yeah, I support that. Well, Priti Patel's been strutting around the world. I'm not sure that's well, been... Mm -hmm. Maybe well, DFID isn't maybe well, the, the, well, the best selling well, point. Priti Patel, right? Patel should have been was quite rightly sacked for the way she behaved. 
But was she just a, an anomaly? Of life? I, don't, I, I think, I think these things give a but, bit of a bad I'm not pressure. here to defend the Conservative Party. I dislike Pretty Patel at all as much as anybody else. OK, OK, but so hang on a minute. So uh, your problem is that you're viewing the people who voted Remain and the people who campaigned for Remain as being part of like, this establishment. No. No, you're not, you don't think that that's no, the establishment of position. No, of course not. OK. But what I'm saying is that by continuing to try and stop the will of the people, which is what a lot of people on the Remain side are doing, well, most you're people, against democracy. No, most people have actually accepted that we are leaving Brexit. Well, most people are actually talking about now yeah. is whether it's going to be a hard Brexit or a soft Brexit. But, but, but there, there is no hard or soft Brexit. There is leaving the European Union and all of its institutions, which no, is they're, what they're people signed up no, to. No, 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 they did not. They did not. They absolutely did not. When people voted to leave, that's all they did. Actually, in the run-up to the EU referendum itself, it was repeatedly said over and over again by figures within the Leave campaign that when we left, we would not be leaving the single market. No, that's not true. Yes, it is. I've actually got a bunch of posts right here that I can read out to you. Um, absolutely nobody's talking about threatening our place in the single market. Who's Daniel Han that? Daniel Hannan. Well, who's, who's Dan Hannan? He's an a, MEP. A, a, a low-grade MEP. Okay, increasingly, the Norway option looks the best for the UK. That's Adam Banks, the Leave.eu yeah, founder. Uh, Nigel Farage himself. Wouldn't it be terrible if we were really like Norway or Switzerland? They're rich, they're happy, they're self-governing. Well, they're Always part of the single market. Well, uh, Norway is. Norway's part of the single market and Switzerland has access to it. If you're talking about so a hard break, there, uh, there are things such as soft breaks. So there's there's, 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 there's a difference between things. having access to a single market and being part of it. Okay. It, but that doesn't negate the fact that people in the run up to that were talking about either remaining in the single market or being connected to it in the same way that Norway currently the, is. The, and the, what that's is something here's, here's the thing, right? I'm going to argue against the single market from a pro, uh, Tony Benn and Michael Foo. What, what do you guys think of Tony Benn and Michael Foo? Do they have principled people? Right, but the fact is, though, if we're talking about democracy, yeah. if we're talking about democracy and what people voted for, they did not vote for a hard okay. Brexit. That's well, kind of that. The People voted to leave the European Union. If you leave the European Union, do you leave its institutions as well? Do you think? Do you think that doesn't need to be the case at all? But why? Why? Why are you scared of leaving? Do you think? Do you think Britain's too poor, too wee, and too stupid? No, to I'm not saying own? that I'm scared that we're leaving. I'm saying that there's been a fundamental misrepresentation. But that people are talking about people voted for hard Brexit. You, you, they didn't. The single market is a protectionist racket. Right. The single market. Okay. Look at what the European Union did to Greece. Look at what the single market does. The single market benefits large corporations. It does not benefit small businesses and local people. And all this garbage about it protects workers' rights. No, it doesn't. But you seem to be suggesting that the people who voted to leave had yeah. a fairly nuanced and complex understanding of all the institutions, how all of this worked, and not to do down the general public. I don't think most people had time or inclination to know think, all about do you think that. We should stop people from voting because they're not intelligent. Absolutely enough, not. What but what you're suggesting is that people voted for the Brexit. I have, I have great you... faith in the British public to be able to vote, and yes, I do but, believe but, they know what they're voting for. But we don't have for. a referendum. If we have a representative democracy, and so when people are talking about taking back control. To, to whom? Who, who should have control over what kind of Brexit we, ha we the, have? The British people, by, but, by being but, able to now elect, because we can now elect our parliamentarians to make decisions right, on our so behalf. so the parliamentarians should make the decisions on our behalf Correct, about yes. the nature of Brexit. Correct, So yes. whether it's hard or soft, we, we have delegated that responsibility to our parliamentarians who will now get to review the final deal. So that's a good thing. I believe we should leave the European Union and all of its institutions. That's that's my position on it. That's I think that's fine for right, your position, but right I don't think decision. you can presume to speak on behalf of all the Leave voters and say that Brexit means Brexit means whatever else because that that's what, just your but what, what 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 I'm actually arguing is that if you're going to do it, you better do it properly and you better do it fully. There's no point in having an in and out. One well, of my big criticisms as well about the Yes campaign was that oh we're we're going to still have everything, but we're going to be independent. Do you know who I admire on the yes side? Jim Sellers. Because at least Jim Sellers actually says what he means. Um, and he, he's right about what he says about what an independent Scotland should look like. But the yes movement didn't have the guts to do what it needed to do during the last referendum. And I doubt it will have the guts to do it again. What do you mean by didn't have the guts to do it? What, what should it have done? Well, it should have, it should have offered a separate currency. It should have offered a complete and total 
leaving of the United Kingdom, at least it would have been proper independence. Yeah, but a lot of people actually absolutely, absolutely advocated for that. The point is, though, that during the independence referendum, in a lot of ways, it was the SNP's vision of what that would be, mm -hmm. which would push the front. But there was many discussions from the Greens mm -hmm. who were advocating for a separate currency. The point is, though, that being an independent country gives us the option to pursue that. Well, we're we going to go talk about independence. Well, do you have any more? You, you offered some tips there. Do you have any more well, tips from the, sec from the next uh, independence? Maybe the tips I'm campaign? telling you aren't the ones that would help your campaign. Mate, but, Is it a double bluff? Uh, who knows? Who knows? But what? What? Uh, genuinely speaking, I mean, you, you look as well at the, the SNP's position on NATO, for example. So that was the biggest hypocritical thing I've ever seen. I had a guy come up to me in Buchanan Street and said, Sir, you, you support nuclear weapons and mass destruction. I said, well, no, I don't. I said, I believe in multilateral disarmament. And I said, what you believe in is putting them 300 miles down the coast. I said, that's hardly principled. And the fact that an independent Scotland would still be part of NATO, which is the biggest nuclear armed alliance, which I happen to believe in, it reeks of hypocrisy. But again, though, if you're saying that Brexit can't be judged in the UK government, equally you cannot judge an independent Scotland on the current SNP administration. Uh, no, but I certainly will, though, because I'm a campaigner to keep us in the United Kingdom. But that's fundamentally dishonest from your previous position. Um, I'm not. <laughs> I wouldn't say I was dishonest. I'd say it's part of the argument. To have double standards. I'm not saying double standards, but I'm not here seeking elected office. I was explaining that to you earlier, showing I'm a campaigner. I believe in certain things and I believe in trying to achieve them. Okay. I mean, if you don't mind bringing back control, let's go back to the okay. discussion about Brexit. Um, Today, I don't know if you saw the news, but the Working Time Directive that the UK is now trying to essentially scrap the Working Time Directive. Mm -hmm. um, UK which is government, not the UK. UK government. Um, you're talking about like how this is this anti-establishment thing, but actually the direction that Brexit is taking us is we're actually seeing the erosion of workers' rights, well, um, as well as all these other problems. I mean, you're talking about how great Brexit is going to be. How is that going to happen when we're already on this path? I, I firmly believe that, that Jeremy Corbyn and John McDonnell want us to leave the European Union and all its institutions. Um, I am I am hopeful that that whilst I disagree fundamentally with a lot of what Jeremy Corbyn stands for, I think he's offering real hope and real change to a lot of people. Um, and just because that is the current government's position on working time directives doesn't mean it's going to be the future government's position. I mean, who's, who knows what the Conservative Party is going to look like in 15, 20 years? Who knows what the Labour Party is so going to look like? 20 years without a cap and how many hours we can work a week? Well, I just... I, d I just don't subscribe to this theory of Scottish exceptionalism, that, that somehow we have this amazing overriding social conscience that nobody else in the UK does. I, I just I don't subscribe to that theory. But you don't have to subscribe to it. You could just wait and put it to the test, and then maybe in a few decades' time you could come back and say, see, the okay. new independent Scotland no, is not no, as left-wing no, as everyone no. says. No. So what, what you guys want to do is you want to consign England and the rest of the UK to perpetual conservative rule. It's up to them as long, what they as, do. As long they as, as, do as, as they that means, what we'll do is we'll draw a big line, what we'll do is we'll build a wall, we'll build a wall there as well, and these guys will all be fine. See, down there, mm -hmm. sod them, who cares about them? Okay, but if you're talking about representative democracy and democracy itself, who are we to decide who they elect? And, and, and well, I mean, you're saying it's, 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 it's like our responsibility to stop no, the uh, what, no, 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 I'm not saying end. that. What I'm arguing is for solidarity. Solidarity based on, on people of, of a working class mm -hmm. that doesn't exist anymore in this country, okay. that used to exist. And that, that I find very disappointing, that before a worker in Glasgow would identify, would have gone out when somebody from Liverpool went out or when somebody from Portsmouth went out. And that is a result of the weakening of the UK and you could argue the weakening of the working classes throughout the UK as well. Okay, but the, my kind of point here is that if you're talking about solidarity, I have solidarity with workers in England. In the segment, I have solidarity with workers in Germany and France and all these other countries. Why does it mean that we need to keep the UK together just because I have solidarity with other people? Because if you don't, you will then, you will not allow, you won't, because, that, because you need levels of working class people to influence change. And in the central belt of Scotland, you, in order to achieve social change, you require a critical mass of people who identify themselves as working class. 
that critical mass does not exist in an independent Scotland. It does kind of no, it, it does kind of sound like you're asking us to be quite self-sacrificing. Yes. Yes. So rather than lead by example and show how a society could be different in an independent Scotland, we are to cross our fingers and hope that large swathes of English voters change their minds. No, I'm not. I'm not saying that at all. I mean, I, no, no, I'm not. I'm not saying that. But but it is a sense that. We, 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 we are an island that has a shared history and I'm asking people mm. to stick with it. You're quite into the shared history, Stephen, you had some thoughts on that. Did I? You did. About um, some, of your, some of your social media campaigns yeah. have been quite, quite sort of war heavy, quite oh. history heavy, rather than, maybe rather than, your, some of your, uh, your sort of digital promotions, <laughs> they're very forward looking. Uh, they involve planets and sun sunsets, <laughs> whereas a lot of your stuff is a little bit more backward looking, a little bit maybe again harking back to the whole. I think when 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 I think the the, the the Second World War was was probably the, the the best moment in this nation's history when it did. We got a lot of stick for staying it, but but as a European nation, we did stand alone. And and I'm a not European sure nation alone as as, 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 the, the, as a European nation that all other European nations. Well, aside from from in the east, that 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 had fallen, Britain in nineteen thirty nine and forty it looked like it was going to be invaded, and it wasn't. And that's not to take away from people from other countries who took part in the war effort. You had a huge swathe of Polish people, but the fundamental fact remains was, if 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 we'd capitulated, the Nazis would have, in my opinion, taken a lot of this historical opinion taken over the whole of Europe. Well, we didn't. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people would also argue the influence America played and the Red the, Army as well. well. When did they join the war? What year did they join the war? Well, it doesn't really matter. Well, it does. The war. No, it, it does. does. Because you're joined in 1941. I shouldn't have opened okay. this. Okay. You joined in 1941. Okay. So between mm -hmm. for the whole of 1940 and the beginning sure. of 1941. Okay, let's forget about America for a second, then. Okay. okay, you're still talking about like, how Britain stood alone. Okay, yeah, it does. That almost seems to imply that just the rest of Europe went, oh well, and just like no, laid no, down no, until no, they did. They didn't. They didn't. We did stand alone. But what I'm saying is that that was, in my opinion, one of the best moments where there was that solidarity, where we had a unified government, where the, the, the means of production, everybody worked together to try and achieve the common aims. Yeah, but I think having a war is probably quite a high price to pay for UK solidarity. I don't think we should well, I don't be think, no, I, And I'm certainly not espousing a war, but I'm just saying it was, a, it was a good and glorious period in our history and one that should be remembered. But not only should we look back, we have to look forward as well. And, and I'm, I'm not going to deny as well that as times in the United Kingdom's history, our record has not been rosy. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not mental. You know, I understand all these things, um, and and I, I, but it, it is to recognise that that there is a future as well. But again, just to, to, to criticise the UK for everything that it's done for the sake of Scottish independence, again, I, I disagree. Well, I think a lot of people are criticising what the the role the UK has played in the world. Because of the role it played in the world, there's not necessarily a ulterior agenda here. No, I, I mean it's, it's certainly not been glorious, but we, we do. We, we, there has been there has been very good aspects to it as well, you know, and and you know our, our parliament, our, our democracy as well, and, and our, our our role throughout the world. I understand all these things, you know, like like, like I think the the big rise in Scottish nationalism again started with the Iraq War. You know, I'm not. I'm not stupid. You, 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 you could see that 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 people people didn't didn't like it in 2003, four. You know, it's no coincidence that Sam went out and won in 2007. So we must learn from from history. But but that's exactly it. I mean, what you're actually talking about now, kind of, in my opinion, counters some of the things we're seeing earlier on, which is that within Scotland, people wanted to take a different path. They voted the SNP because, for whatever reason, they wanted to go in a different direction, and that's why they voted for a different party. Okay. So when you're talking okay, about unity, it's ignoring the fact that people wanted to go in a different direction. One in four direction. people took a different direction because the parliamentary turnout of Scottish elections is anemic. 52, 56 percent. It's not a huge turnout. Um, and when you look at the last election, was it 1.04 million in the constituency vote voted SNP? Okay. I mean, that's not that's not an overwhelming. Majority of that's not a huge swathe of the population. Okay, but are you therefore saying that because turnout wasn't as high as it should be, we should just ignore that? No, no, I'm not okay. saying that. But to have the sweeping generalisation that Scotland thinks differently, Scotland took a different path. But Scotland is taking a different path. If we were on the same path as the rest of the UK, we'd have a Conservative government in the Scottish Parliament. And 
well, who's to say that couldn't happen in the future? But it hasn't. But it could happen. It has, but we don't have that. Polls are showing that support for the um, Conservatives is actually dropping in Scotland again. We've probably hit peak Tory in terms of like that support being showed up. Purely, in my opinion, probably because of everyone viewing it through a constitutional lens, we are taking a different direction. And I'm not talking about Scottish exceptionalism. I'm not putting it out here as if we're somehow unique and special. We're not. We have a lot of the same problems as anywhere else. Yes, does. we do. Absolutely. But at the same time, that doesn't mean that we haven't but I, voted I, I, to I, take a different route. But then, well, I just don't look at it through a Scottish prism. I'm, I, I can't do it. I mean, when does that stop? Do I start looking at things through a Renfrewshire prism because I stay in Renfrew or, or from, from a Glasgow prism? I think you should be looking at it through all these prisms. Mm. That's the whole point. I mean, the SNP are not trying to grab all the powers. Yes, they the certainly Scottish are. Aren't they certainly all. are well, the trying to grab all the, the powers they can. Is the Community the, Empowerment the, the, Act the, about the, the Scottish government? Power? Well, let, let's go. Let's move on to British Transport Police. Okay. Do you think that's a good thing? That people are coming up on a train? Oh, guys, you get off the train there and, and we'll go on and do it. I don't think, sadly, we're going to have time to go into all the different policies. Perhaps that's for another day. Mm. The SNP um, exists to further their aim of independence and they will use the instruments of government that they have to further them. That does not mean that they will not take other routes along the way. There's been, the SNP have done a lot of good things. I'm not, not acknowledging that. And okay. They've done a lot of terrible things. I don't, I don't subscribe to the whole, oh, the SNP are terrible. Mm -hmm. Of course they've done a lot of good things. I mean, one of the things I always comment on is I think their infrastructure spending has actually been very, very good. The new bridges, all the roads and everything like that. And they prioritise infrastructure. So I don't subscribe to everything that they do is bad. Okay. But... I don't give them it gladly. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. But at the same time, though, like... The SNP's policy is actually almost irrelevant here. My point that I'm making is ultimately that Scotland is voting for a party that is not one the rest of the UK is voting for. We are not voting Conservative in this country. And that's fine. It's fine to be different. We don't need to have this like completely unified position across the whole of the UK. Well, correct. But... That, that's where the intention of the Scottish Parliament was, was, was set up. Again, it was to say that, well, we don't vote that. Again, I, I don't view it from a Scottish perspective. You could argue the same about the North East of England. The North East of England hasn't voted for a Tory government in, what, 50, 100 years, maybe? So, I would argue that there's a fundamental problem with democracy in this country. But, but then do we, start, out, but do we start, do we start, do we start, as I said, balkanising the UK? I'd be pretty okay with that. If you, if you bring power back to people's hands and give them the option to make no, decisions of the local community, that benefits everyone. I, I, I argue that it's bad leadership to have people make no, decisions no, for No, 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 that people are in a position that they have, that, that the leadership has been so poor that, that, that people, that if we have local councils that deliver these services well, like I'm actually talking about proper local democracy, not regional democracy, proper local democracy, which is through councils who are sort of decimated recently, mm -hmm. but that's, again, that's for another day, I'm sure. I think it is, and that yeah. does probably bring us to the end. Sure. Can I just ask one more question? So, um, just in case people don't know your background, David, this yeah. is a local councillor yeah. in Renfrew. Um, you did start out as a Tory councillor. Yeah, that's correct. And then you changed to Labour, <laughs> yeah, okay. which uh -huh. is a pretty 180 degree um, twist. So, I mean, is there any chance, you seem like you're informed yeah. on all the issues, you seem like you think quite deeply about it yeah, all. I do. Maybe after Brexit, maybe you might Make another no, hundred and eighty no, degree no, and realise no, this is not no, right. No, there's, there, there, there is there is there is one thing I will never be in that is a, a supporter of an independent Scotland. Okay. Um, I'll nail my colours to the mast. That we've that established one. that firmly. Stephen, I think some people had some questions. You have two minutes to go through any of those questions at all, or oh, um, <laughs> we might have to follow this up. I think you will, maybe we'll have to follow yeah, this one up because um, I don't want them thinking that I've avoided yeah, their. Yeah. Well, well, one, 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 of the ones, one of the ones I will address, because it is as big as someone said, where do we get all the money from? Um, and and it, the start-up capital for this organisation came directly from myself. Since we've started, we've had some people come in and say, we like what we are doing, we'll be prepared to help you. My long-term ambition for this organisation is to have one to 2,000 people giving us a tenner a month, and that'll fund us easily, because you need that solid, proper grassroots support to give you legitimacy. We have 3,000 signed up supporters across the UK who want to leave the European Union and keep the UK intact. This time next year we'll hope to have 100,000 supporters. Well, we'll have to see how that goes. 
Uh, but yes, that does bring us into yeah, the end good. of this. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much for coming in. Fantastic, uh, thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no worries. And uh, thank you to everyone who watched as well. Yeah, and left a comment you. down below. Uh, yeah, great. Um, well, thank you very much for this. Please, yeah, comment and write into us and let you yeah. let let us know what you thought and let we can continue the Cheers. discussion. You can leave thanks more uh, in the comments down below and uh, somebody make it back to you. <laughs> who knows? All right, well, thanks very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you for coming in.